Left. And uh, Langmack takes it back to a point just inside the Canterbury 22. Campbell is the dummy half. Johnston out from dummy half and making a lot of ground but losing the ball so the first scrum of the game well it's all well and good to be enthusiastic out of marker but the, the two markers have got to combine and coordinate and one's got to break one side and one the other what happened then was the two North Sydney markers both went the same way Johnson sensed it and made good yardage when he when he ducked out in the other the other angle Philip Heiner tied up by Langmack Penalty to North Sydney, Canterbury inside the five. Well, Billy Johnston, he can't argue because he was standing shoulder to shoulder almost with Kevin Roberts, but un unfortunately for him, it's about two feet in front of him. And Steve Mortimer uh, made it fairly clear to Billy that he wouldn't accept it a second time. He gave him a real tongue lashing. Well, North Sydney, uh, 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 you're talking breeze, right? We had some trouble through the lines there. Yeah. came to me. Well, the breeze is more or less a cross field. Yeah, really not favouring any side. It's, it's only coming up uh, uh, in drifts now and then. Perfect weather for football. We should see a, a big kicking game from both sides, uh, uh, from, from either end, both first and second half. Gets it away nicely. He likes the look of it. So too do the touch judges and so too does the scoreboard. That's if you're a North supporter. Two points to nil in favour of the Bears. Terry Lamb. Kicking that ball way down to the North Sydney goal line. MacArthur comes back with it. Penalty to Norse. And, uh, it's Cannon taking the kick for line. There's a lower grade results. 24-16 Canterbury, the 23s, and 16-10 to 10 North, the reserves. And apparently Canterbury took a bit of a battering, did they not, Graham, in reserve grade? They certainly did. Peter Johnston is the most serious or reserve, reserve grade front rower. They've taken him to hospital for a check. He received a finger in the eye and there may be bleeding uh, in the retina. And also uh, Mark Bugden uh, is in ice on the bench uh, in the dressing rooms. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge doubt as to whether he'll, he'll take his uh, spot on the bench. So there's no reserve standby hooker for Billy Johnston either. Mortimer, done. Oh, good tackle. McKinnon and Bella. Mortimer, Sigsworth, playing in fine form is Phil Sigsworth. Since Canterbury fell on hard times as far as their fullback is concerned. This is Kelly underneath that pack of bears. Lamb. And that looks to be anything but the kick Lamb was looking for, although Norse through Conlon have been forced to take it in goal. And Lamb went down the ground and he seems to have hurt himself as he went in for the tackle on Conlon. Here's Conlon in the end goal. He gets back into the field of play and Lamb went in hard, but he came off second best. I think you find that Canterbury will kick the ball a lot in this match. North Sydney have got a very big pack of forwards and the long kick is obviously one way of turning them around and tiring them. Some attention there for Lamb now. Cannon's kick going down to Campbell, off the feet. Sigsworth. Oh, gee, that pass was forward from Billy Johnston to Kelly. No question the pass was forward, but of course, where do you give a penalty? The rule says intentionally forward. Of course, you've got to be a genius to work that out, haven't you? Penalty to North, and so 
the penalty flow very much going with the red and blacks three of them in fact to north canterbury yet to get a penalty as this former st george player mark cannon takes the kick for life as graham said it's a perfect football day it's overcast cool but a very good day for a, a big promotional day here at uh, North Sydney. This is Bella. Two nil in favor of North, Filipina. Away from Johnson. Cannon. Kick a fine touch, I think. Sigsworth will probably... No, he's got a favourable bounce. It was heading for the touchline, but a tackle made by Kiss. And also the second row at Jones. It's gone wide now to Lamb and across to O'Brien, who came in from the left wing. Farrah. With that troublesome knee heavily bandaged. Dunn. Langmack. The kick coming from Chris Mortimer. Right underneath it is Conlon. And uh, this will be a penalty again to North Sydney against Canterbury for stealing the ball. Well, the bloke was going nowhere and they persisted in making the tackle. <laughs> Lindsay, the hooker, taking the tap. Bella. Tackle right in the middle of the ground. So on one play, they've come from the 10-metre line to the centre. This is Jones going back into the middle of the park. Play 25 metres out. Canterbury players urgently calling for help on this side of the ground now. Graham. Well, North Sydney working to a very strict pattern. They're taking the ball to the centre of the field and returning it with their two centres folding back. Uh, Canterbury have read it particularly well and they've had their defence there to cover it. Penalty to Canterbury. This is not facing goal goal when playing the ball. As distinct from the direction in which you play the ball. See that? He was facing side on, almost touchline, touchline. That's illegal. Farrah taking the, the line finder. Well, I mentioned that it's cool here. It's probably better described as cold, but certainly not as cold as Susan Normando, who lives in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. As O'Brien makes a burst down the touchline to the 22 and back inside for Sigsworth, who's tackled. And uh, Susan is a good Bears supporter watching it each week over there, and we're very happy to receive your letter and say hello to you from your own North Sydney Oval, Susan along with a lot of other Canadians, I believe. McKinnon back to Bella. Bella's to within five metres of the halfway line. Across now it comes to Filipina and now to Florimo. And uh, from Canada, of course, the rugby league game is televised now. The rugby league from Sydney anyway in the north of England and a man who is there permanently is the I believe the chairman of Halifax, David Brooks, is with Graham Hughes, sidelines. David, welcome to Australia. Thank you very much, Graham. I believe very um, much a, a part of a, a big contingent of uh, English people out here looking for players to take back home. I believe so, yes. I've only met uh, Alex Murphy so far, but I believe there are other people apart from myself. David, you have a good tie-up with the Canterbury Bankstown Club. Uh, a, a great success last season for Halifax. Uh, Chris Anderson is the captain coach and also Jeff Robinson. Yes, indeed. Uh, Chris did an absolutely marvellous job. In fact, uh, a great deal of the credit for the success goes to, uh, to Chris Anderson. Robbo, well, you know Robbo, wonderful uh, runner up and uh, an inspiration you know he never gives in here's a chance for North Sydney McCaffrey uses the cutout pass Conlon juggles it oh that's a forward pass oh that went a mile forward and it's been knocked on Canterbury get the ball from the advantage rule 
And I've got to tell you that I'm rather happy for Kevin Roberts that that was the bottom line of that passage of football because the ball didn't go forward. It went two metres forward from the outside centre as such to the winger. My apologies to David Brooks and Graham Hughes. Thanks, Ray. David, I wanted to put this to you. It's been reported in the press. Uh, how strong is it that Graham Eady might be a possibility to come out of retirement and, and join a, his former kangaroo teammate, uh, Chris Anderson? Well, it's a, it's a bit of a way to go, yeah. We have talked. Uh, I've talked to Graham. He is pretty well tied up in business, and uh, there's a certain lot of talking to do before anything finally was settled. OK, well, thanks for joining us, and good luck for next season. Well, okay. Thank you for asking me to join you. In the meantime, Steve Mortimer found the line with this kick on the NEC replay. The Norse player, <laughs> it was like a kid putting his hand through the candy shop door. <laughs> you can see it, but don't you dare touch it. Penalty, Canterbury. He's calling Billy Johnson over and saying, just keep your mouth shut. I'm the referee, I'll handle the situation. In the meantime, take a penalty. You can only imagine that Bill thought he'd been penalised himself and decided to mouth off and then looked up and saw the arm pointing towards his team. This is Folks now. Done. Back to Johnston. A little bit of a skip around the fallen players. Some pressure here for North Sydney. And Sigsworth is tackled again very close to the line. They've got a big back line to the right and they hit Robinson up on the blind. Oh, how easy. He went straight through Brett French, the centre three quarter. Well, the good coaches will tell you the first thing you've got to do is do the simple things well. And Canterbury did that exactly the way it came out of the manual. And Brett French had no idea in the world how he was going to contend with this big, hard-running second row, front row forward, Jeff Robinson. Four points to Canterbury. This was a very well-engineered try. Well set up by Canterbury. They got themselves into the field position they wanted. Mortimer skipped out of dummy half, threw the pass across the face of one player and on to Jeff Robinson. He's only 26. Jeff, it seems like he's been around for quite some time longer than a man of 26. And he uh, came out of the Chester Hill Club. I've got a funny feeling that this little fellow, Terry Lamb, came from the same area and, in fact, from that same club. <laughs> Terry Lamb with this kick from just eight metres in from touch. Almost a certainty to be wearing the green and gold come November, December. Beautiful kick. Absolutely beautiful kick. So Canterbury banks down, lead North Sydney by six points to two. You're watching the NEC Big Game. Lamb. And they've gone for the kick on the first tackle. O'Brien is leading the race. Still, uh, still a chance. Cleaned up by North now. Line dropout will restart the action. See it again, a play that is being used by so many. In fact, I think the first time I saw it was in a state of origin out of Lang Park when Dale Shearer actually scored. He seemed to have brought it to Sydney and with Mitchell Cox, they've worked up a fine combination. Drop kick by Florimo as ordinary. Folks. Mortimer, Langmack. Steve Mortimer, Terry Lamb, cuts out Chris Mortimer, Sigsworth gives it to Farrah, and Farrah tackled nicely around the legs by Brett French. Folks. Robinson. Met there by Mark Graham, together with Bella. 
Now Mortimer with a grubber kick. Sigsworth's going fast. It'll be another line drop out if this man is caught now. No, he made the field of play. Good work by Conlon, the Norse fullback. But Canterbury not frightened to vary their game up using the kicking game. And here's a penalty going to Norse. Take a match comment at this stage from Graham Hughes. Pretty plain to see at this stage. Just watch the enthusiasm from the Canterbury defence. Every time a North Sydney man takes this ball up, the Canterbury forwards twos and threes. They're quick to move up, and more often than not, they're hit hitting the North Sydney forwards well behind the play of the ball. North gaining no advantage whatsoever out of that, uh, out of out of having the uh, ball in possession. Whereas on the other side of the scale, every time Canterbury take the ball up, North Sydney sitting back and waiting for them to come. Here's McKinnon going up and getting outside the 22. Langmack and Robinson together with Johnston making the tackle. And now it's out to Philippine. And across to Graham. Sigsworth. Away from Cannon, away from Bella. He's right on the halfway line. Over it, and O'Brien knocks on. So a scrap. <laughs> Certainly poured some money into North Sydney Oval. It's, uh, it's an absolute picture. And work still going on on another couple of very attractive grandstands. It's a wide shot of the ground, but it's it's unbelievable what's happened here. Bella. Good run by Bella. Oh, Brett French. Brett French is going down the ground, but the referee has only allowed that so long as the advantage did not apply. But Bella went through the Canterbury defence, which has been so solid. And uh, there he is coming through it. Got a good ball, I thought, away to French, and he just couldn't take it. It was as simple as that. Good opportunity lost there for the Bears. Fed by Mortimer at the same time. She saw a kid in the street the other day with the Canterbury 7 on his back, and what did he get written above it? Archbishop. So Lamb's pass goes behind him, picked up by Sigsworth. And now it's with Langmack. Down for Canterbury as folks. Done. Again, five metres on that play. Mortimer has gone over the advantage line. Put the kick in. It's going close to the touch line. Conlon is forced to take it over the touch line, so it'll be a Canterbury feed. Mortimer and Lamb are using all of their kicking uh, abilities here. Mortimer with a couple of grubbers, one to the open, one to the blind. Lamb with the big kick down the ground for O'Brien. And here's Canterbury now stretching the ball to Chris Mortimer. And uh, Conlon has him parceled up with Filipino. Sixworth coming off that left foot. Tackled nine metres out from the north line. Again, problems for Canterbury. Uh, for, for North Sydney, I should say, as Johnston is held a few metres out from the line. Canterbury brewing up with something here. Mortimer's been doing a lot of talk in the back play on the previous ruck. Here's uh, Langmack, tackled a few metres out. And now they've got players both left and right, and plenty of them as we find Kelly going up, getting it away. North seemed to touch it. It was six more, I do believe. But Canterbury themselves have knocked on. Flick passes to Langmack, who broke from the scrum quickly. He's now playing the ball a few metres out from the line, as you can see from that picture. This is Paul Dunn working it back into the play the ball. Lamb is wide and calling, but they've gone blindside again. This is Campbell. 
Canterbury really hitting that blind side when they've been in, in try scoring areas. Steve Mortimer to Kelly. The line just in front of them. Billy Johnston from dummy half and held up. Held up in goal. It's a scrum five metres out. getting no room to work in Philip Piner as I suggested earlier was coming up very very quickly Campbell Langmack Mortimer Lamb Chris Mortimer Cuts out Sigsworth, gives it to Farrah. He gets away from Brett French. <laughs> Kelly. Five tackles gone for Canterbury. Mortimer. And that kick by Mortimer. Oh, it's a beautiful kick. Finding it just a couple of metres out from the North Sydney line. Norse will have the scrum feed. Here's the, the replay. Let's see if there are any hands that get in the way. No, again, Les Kiss does the right thing, lets it go. When I say the right thing, that is the right thing. When you're not sure you can take it cleanly, you're better off coming up with the scrum feed, as Norse did, and in fact won the scrum. And this is big Don McKinnon, who plays at 15 metres out from his own line. Bella been quite outstanding I think for the, the North Sydney pack so far this is Florimo North could make their job a lot easier than they are they're building the ball up one out off the ruck and making themselves sitting targets for Canterbury they're enthusiastic enough but if they could just introduce a little bit of variety I'm sure that it would uh, would wrong foot the Canterbury defence Sixworth goes back after the Conlon kick and uh, for one of the few moments in the first half, Canterbury are in fact in their own territory. The defence has been just so solid. Chris Mortimer back to Billy Johnston, away to Paul Dunn. Dunn looks around, who wants it? Lamb says, I'll take it. He makes ground, he makes good ground. He's gone 30 metres, he kicks for Steve Mortimer and uh, taking the ball is John MacArthur. Well, again, we've seen the example of a player wanting to beat the defence with the little kick. And it's a talking point uh, in rugby league that's a fairly common talking point. The modern era of rugby league players seem to want to use the kick more than anything to beat the opposition when you've almost got a situation of one-on-one. -on -one. In my opinion, they use the kick too often. Yeah, I tend to think that if, if players that were on their own took the opposition full back on, that uh, as many times as he'd make the tackle, he'd miss the tackle. The kick down the ground, taken by Sigsworth. And now it's Campbell. Oh, Campbell's made a good run. He had no ground to work in. Here comes Lamb, and now folks and folks, will he go all the way? No, he's a metre out from the line. Struggling for a quick play, the ball. Held down by Mark Graham. Taps it a forward. And it should be a penalty. He's going to give a penalty try. I believe he's going to mark the spot and give a penalty try to Steve Folks. He hasn't made the decision as yet. Well, there's the kick ahead. Folks has held out of it. I'm almost certain that Kevin Roberts is going to give a penalty try here to Canterbury Bankstown. We'll have to wait and see. He hasn't hasn't made the indications as yet he's marking the spot and moving to the in goal center of the uprights it's a penalty try to canterbury and of course the attempted conversion is taken from in front of the uprights 10 meters out well the last penalty try we saw i think was the controversial one at uh, leichhardt scored by david brooks and that day i think it was against canterbury it was, but I think Kevin Roberts did everything right here. He, he took time to make his decision. He didn't make it lightly. He called the, uh, the touch judge in, and having thought about it, he decided that the try was the way to go, and I agree with him after watching the replay. 
Well, that's an interesting point that you make, Bill, and I'm not sort of picking on you and I'm not start, trying to start an argument, but as you said, after watching the replay, I agree with him. And of course, a lot of people tend to forget that the ref's only got one look at it, and it's a split second. One from one for Terry Lamb. to be getting odds against about him kicking this. Fred Teasdale on the bench there for Norse, playing with the yo-yo. Well, that's another way of passing the time, Fred. <laughs> Lamb successful. Canterbury extends their lead to 12 points to two in the NEC big game from Norse in the Oval. kicking exhibitions today and relay races for the celebrities. We've had plenty going at North Sydney Oval. Full marks all. Billy Johnson's put it down again. It went backwards. It's with Kelly. The full marks are North Sydney. Uh, the day entitled Try for the Kids and uh, some of the proceeds going to the Camperdown Children's Hospital. Well done, Bears. Well done. This is Kiss. Lamb the tackler, centre of the ground, 15 out from the north line. Conlon. McKinnon. North won the first round encounter down at Belmore by 19 to 4. It's worth remembering, of course, that day that Canterbury did have a lot of, a lot of players out with injury. It's not meant to detract from the North's performance that day, but Canterbury today seem to have the, the right level of intensity. They've gone into the match knowing that no longer is it a pushover when you're playing North. They are just out of the five, having one of their best seasons for a long, long time. O'Brien. Langmack. Every time they take it up, they're making... It's starting to look ominous, isn't it? The, uh, the Canterbury forwards are making progress and North's waiting. Conlon was standing back deep. Fielded now by Florimo. Mortimer appealed for the penalty. Have a look at it again on the NEC replay. The ball bounces and Mortimer puts the kick in. I think his appeal was warranted. McKinnon. Night, South and East in Tui's Monday Night Football. Conlon's kick, quite a big kick down to Sidsworth. It didn't make the Canterbury fullback do any work. Now Campbell will go away from dummy half. No, he's given it to Farrah and run round. Robinson. Scored a try for Canterbury. That's a good piece of football. Lamb with a cutout ball to Farrah. Now to Chris Mortimer. On it goes to Steve O'Brien. Chased and tackled by Philippina. Not held and now he's secured by Conlon. But Canterbury will probably push it back to the right. Oh, they've... Uh, <laughs> they've really pressed the panic button. They knew what had to be done quickly. But they've knocked on it to play the ball. This is Johnny MacArthur. Playing on the wing these days for Norths. You might remember him wearing the West number seven. Of course, the number one jumper has been on his back a lot. But there he is now on the wing for North Sydney. Talented young player. 
McKinnon's put it down. Folks has got it for Canterbury. Well, some of the drop ball in the first half has been quite amazing. Uh, that doesn't seem to have been a great deal of pressure on the players, the players that have dropped the football. Kelly's lost it. Sigsworth has come up with it. Steve Mortimer, Langmack, off a North Sydney hand, scooped up by Farrah, here goes Lamb, he's around Bella, he's inside the 22, Mortimer rakes it back and Canterbury have got six more tackles, again it was touched by North Sydney, Mortimer goes to the blind side, the long ball to Terry Lamb and there's a Canterbury try, scored by a magnificent combination of Steve Mortimer and Terry Lamb. North Sydney absolutely run ragged here by these, these small Canterbury players. Mortimer and Lamb, they kept it alive, they engineered it, and they finished it off. This try is the result of pace. Pace of playing the ball, pace of thinking, and pace of passing. A beautiful ball by Mortimer to Terry Lamb, and of course, he did the rest. Here it is again, as Terry Lamb will come straight down the barrel of this corner, this corner camera. Nothing more to be said, but Canterbury simply kept the ball alive, made the ball do the work. And this fellow, Terry Lamb, the best, well, the best supporter of the ball carrier I think I've seen in rugby league. Five metres in from touch, he is attempting conversion of his own try. 22 metre line is where he's placed the ball. I was telling you they had a goal kicking competition earlier, Graham Eady. George Tailforth on your camera now. John Gray, Alan McKean, and Bobby Lanigan. Lamb's kick is just off the line. And the scoreline in the NEC big game remains unchanged. Canterbury 16, North's 2 from Bears Park. There's the siren. The end of the first 40. Very much an exhibition from the Premiers that uh, reminds me of the match we saw them play against West at the cricket ground a few weeks ago. Let's take a comment from Graham Hughes. It certainly does. It was a big performance from the Canterbury forwards, especially here in this first 20 minutes. Their defence, more than anything, has set up this big half-time scoreline. They really do have the North Sydney Bears going backwards when they are, they are in possession. I don't think we're about to see a miracle in, in this next 40 minutes of play, but if the score is going to remain respectable, and the New Zealand contingent of Philip Heiner uh, and Mark Graham are going to have to stay involved, especially in the 40 minutes of every facet of the North Sydney play. Welcome back to the telecast today as we come off a shot of the most beautiful harbour in the world to what now could probably be described as the most beautiful ground in the world. It certainly is quaint to use I think an apt word 16 to 2 the Bears leading North. That's not so quaint when you look at it from a North Sydney point of view. The Duncan Thompson stand, well accommodated. But as I pointed out earlier in the telecast, there are several extensions and renovations being made here still to complete this, uh, this park. Canterbury to get it going for us. A big lead at halftime. Three tries, two goals. 16 to two. Lamb's kick going down right into the corner. Conlon comes back. And there's the tackle camp. North 105, Canterbury 103. Dunn and Folks 15 and 14 respectively. Graham 18 and 14 for North respectively. McKinnon, not McKinnon, but Jones losing the ball, played by Robinson and Canterbury in the very early seconds of this game in the second half go on to the attack. Johnston, a long ball out to Langmack. He's just inside the 10 metre line. Well, if Canterbury follow the pattern of what they've been doing, they'll simply take this to the middle and then fire it back to the blind. Farrah. Within a metre of the line. Last tackle, back to the blind for Dunn. Holds it back, one-handed away to Johnston. Long ball to Lamb. Lamb puts up the kick. And it's uh, going to be a tap from the 22. Well taken by Conlon. 
was the replay of the kick from Lamb. Conlon always was going to have to take it. And so the tap gets us going again. McKinnon. Martin Bella. Jones. This is French. Cannon. His kick sending uh, Sigsworth back, but I think it'll go over the dead ball line. Yes, it does. It was a, a kick that amounted to nothing for Mark Cannon. And more and more. Uh, I'm of the belief that there's no doubt the Premiers will be out there on grand final day defending their crown. Let's take a match comment from Graham Hughes. Further to what I mentioned as the players were coming off at half-time, North Sydney, Mark Graham's just not really getting involved enough for mine. I, I know they really are searching for Miracle being behind on the board here, 16-2. to two. But we've seen North Sydney since half-time. This is Johnny MacArthur reeling out of a tackle. Paul McCaffrey tries to take it ahead. Yeah, since half-time with two sets of six tackles and Filipina and Mark Graham as yet not really involved. We see Filipina with the ball now. Mark Graham's got to get himself wide. He's the man that can stand. It needed three men to stop him there. He's the man that can stand, lead this side, get his hand free and set him up. They've tried to take Canterbury up in the middle. That's not going to work. Get the ball out wide. Cannon's kick bounces back. But it's been indicated by the touch judge that it went into touch in goal. And that, of course, that portion of the line is no different than the dead ball line. Out to the 22 for the restart. Kelly. Farrah. Oh, good ball. O'Brien, Philippina chasing. O'Brien's away, but Philippina got a hand to his boot. Now it's gone to Chris Mortimer, in and away. Lamb puts himself onside. Lamb looking for runners. He's got uh, red and black jumpers all around him. So Terry Lamb. Done. Up to the north, 22. Billy Johnston, Langmack. Langmack gets it away for Johnston. Then it's away to Sigsworth. He dances away from the second rower who comes again, Gavin Jones, and puts him down. 12 metres out from the north line. Mortimer with the short ball to Kelly. Kelly on tackle number five. Succumbs to the Bears' defence. Right in front of the uprights. And uh, Steve Mortimer has gone away without it. So it's going to be a scrum in the mouth almost of the, um, the North Sydney uprights. There's the incident that brought about the, the scrum. And again, it's the half-lock combination. Knocked down by North. Oh, he can't clean it up. Yes, he can, Conlon. Another scrum. This time it'll be a Canterbury feed. And that amounts to enormous pressure coming for North Sydney. The Bears, they can't afford to let Canterbury score again. And so far, the, uh, the ploy of Mortimer ducking into one off the ruck or getting the dummy half and simply throwing a long ball has bamboozled the North Sydney fence, defence and don't be surprised if they try it again. So this time, it's Steve Mortimer feeding it. They won that previous scrum against the feed. But, of course, they're, they're attacking venom if you like their attacking prongs weren't set up in that situation they are now here's Mortimer running from the base of the scrum tackled about seven meters out from the north line uh, he went to give a penalty but he's played the advantage and it's Langmack losing the ball picked up by Sigsworth Sigsworth's about three meters out from the line and Langmack is down behind the play the ball Folks goes from dummy half 
He's not far away from the line. He's already been awarded a penalty try in the first half from a similar situation. Not this time. Quick passing, long passing. Out to Chris Mortimer. Now it's with Terry Lamb. Terry Lamb's run into trouble over there. And as the North Sydney players put the little 5 8 down, he plays it back to Billy Johnston. It's gone away long out to Langmack. And Langmack, looking around for support, gets the pass out the back and knocked on by Chris Mortimer. So a scrum will form 10 metres out from the North line. Chat there with Conlon, the fullback. A big day at league headquarters tomorrow. The New South Wales Board of Directors will sit and discuss. And I believe will come up with their recommendation as to the number of teams that will compete for the Winfield Cup next year. Of course, the three alternatives are 14 teams, as is. Ball stolen by Lamb. Away to O'Brien. Heads for the corner. Oh, that's a good try. You can talk all you like about what happened to the North Sydney defence, but I'm going to tell you from Steve O'Brien's point of view, that is a strong winger's try. Lamb took this ball away from Les Kiss. He darted a couple of paces in towards the corner. And then O'Brien has three defenders coming at him. He holds off MacArthur and the other two, well, he beat them as well. And that's a, a very strong winger's try. Lamb's got the knack of being able to pinch the ball in the tackle. He got it onto O'Brien. O'Brien was hit. He went through three defenders and charged over. This is a great try. I can see Chicken Norton as I look down coming out of the grandstand. He's going down to the bench. He'd be a very disappointed coach in this try being scored. But I'm looking at it on the positive side from O'Brien's point of view. That's as good a try as he's going to score because of the fact that he was able to withstand such... Well, he had little room to work in and he was able to beat a couple of the tackles at the same time. 21, a bricklayer from the Moorbank Rams in 83. Lamb's kick from near the sideline, just wide. So Canterbury continues to lead North by 20 points to two in the NEC big game. Peter Cross uh, in 23 is the man that's gone on. Uh, Philip Piner has come off. He, I believe he has a uh, corked thigh muscle. As yet, we don't know the positional changes. from behind by MacArthur. Now it's Dunn. Dunn tackled inside the 22 line. Billy Johnston, it's a penalty to Norse. A penalty to Norse against Paul Dunn for not playing the ball correctly. He didn't rake it or kick it with his foot. And uh, that's the reason for the penalty going to North Sydney. Well, down on the sidelines, Graham is now with uh, another of the Canterbury players who's out injured, David Gillespie. What a season for him. Dave, once again, these Canterbury forwards have, have set up what is a, looks like a, a victory, another big performance in the first 40 minutes. Do you guys get together in the dressing room prior to going out and really cheer each other up? Uh, not really, Graham. We, we just get in there and have a, you know, have a yarn between ourselves like as an individual and um, just let all the talk and when we get out in the field, just let, do all the action out in the field. Well, I'm close to the action here. The enthusiasm in that first half was enormous. Two and three forwards in on every tackle. What about the talking on the field then? Well, um, you know, Steve Morton was out there and he usually keeps the boys on, you know, in tune. And, um, like, North Sydney beat us um, in the first round uh, this year, so we got something, you know, pay back to them. There's been a lot of pressure on the side. For the first time, Canterbury, so many players being picked on the representative sides. What's the atmosphere like uh, having to plug up those gaps? Well, you know, it's always good getting, you know, a lot of, lot of blokes getting um, picked in the representative size, but you just, once once you come back to your club football, you've got, you got to um, produce your club football, you know, your best at your, at your club level. So um, it's good getting all the players in there, but you just got to come and perform on the day for your club. What about yourself, Dave? It's been a, a, a torn rib cartilage, I believe, when you'd like to be back. 
Um, yeah, well, I wouldn't mind me back for um, South on a Monday night if it's a Monday night game, but we'll just see how it's, it's coming along pretty good, so we'll just see how it is. OK, good luck. It's been a great season. Congratulations. Thanks, Grant. Lamb's kick. It's a beauty. Canterbury Bankstar leading by 22 points to two. by Conlon and Sigsworth comes outside the 10 metre line McCaffrey was the tackle I don't think you find that Canterbury will kick the ball anywhere near as much in this half the, the kicking served its purpose, it's tied the North Sydney forwards and now I think Canterbury are convinced they can start to make yardage up the middle and out wide what this, what this performance is doing but it'll be sending a few shock waves through the rest of the competition because Canterbury are showing us that they can play it as rough and hard as you like but when they get the chance they can still play the razzle dazzle Bella Jones through Cannon to French and North Sydney they they might score French still going back across the ground oh, goodness he sold some dummies didn't he more than the local chemist would sell in a week he certainly sold plenty then that's well taken by Mark Graham it was an evil pass to give him that's uh, Bella just inside the 10 metre line. Cannon. McKinnon knocks on. I think it's a pretty good example of how good this Canterbury defence is. They just keep coming up and putting pressure on you and no matter how many passes you string together, they just keep coming up and up until eventually you come up with a fumble. Just rounding off my comment about tomorrow's meeting of the board penalty goes a differential to Canterbury of course they will decide tomorrow whether it's a 14 team 13 team or a 12 team competition in 1987 that's one of many things under discussion tomorrow at a very very important meeting of the nine-man board to discuss where rugby league's going in 87 Robinson Johnston. Wide to the right and deep and plenty of players in the back line. Mortimer. Lamb. Cut out ball. Chris Mortimer. Still they might wrap it to that side. They do. Sigsworth. Bumps off one on the 32 metre line. That'll be four tackles now that he's indicating. Away to Mortimer. The grubber kicked through by Steve, taken there well by Mark Cannon. It's a little exhibition from Steve Mortimer of his ability to control the football off the hands, off the boot. This is Graham. Oh, good pass by Graham. That was a great pass. French away to kiss. Campbell, Campbell makes a tremendous tackle on the North Sydney winger. By Jove, that was a tremendous test of uh, Campbell's pace. North Sydney, can they score? Across it comes, and it's uh, Conlon, the fullback. Across it goes wide. Florimo, he's got to score. Yes, Greg Florimo. Not only is he going to score, he's going to go back around and give his goal kicker an easier chance. Well, that all came from... A magical pass by Mark Graham. And here it is, the ball that set it all up. Brett French was running like the hunchback of Notre Dame. He had the football on his back and carried it for a couple of paces. But that was a tremendous contest between Kiss and Campbell. And uh, then the ball was spun fairly quickly after that kick through by Mortimer by the Bears. It came across for the uh, replacement, Peter Cross, to give it on. Cannon got involved. And so too did another North Sydney player before Greg Florimo. Skirted out wide, came back in field, and North scoring a very good football try, a very good rugby league try indeed for this man who performs pretty well on the skateboard. I think it, there's the kick for North now. 
from uh, Les Kiss. Oh, he's missed it from right in front. I think he played for the 19s this year for NSW. 22 to 6, the scoreline in favour of Canary Baxter. Canterbury about to restart. Let's go straight to the sidelines. Here's great. Steve Hansen in 24 moved to the sideline for North Sydney. He was uh, he was given the mail to uh, take the place of Don McKinnon. He, he ran on field to see Kevin Roberts and Don McKinnon saw a side of him and said, you get back out there, I'm not finished quite yet. <laughs> Come on. So, so back to his... <laughs> pardon me, back to his previous position. That is Steve Hansen. This is McKinnon. I just find it hard to believe that a coach could tell a player to go on and replace someone else and then the player being replaced says, I'm not coming off. Conlon putting in a very big kick. From just inside the 22, it landed down on the Canterbury 22 and here's Campbell. Now Hansen's going back to the sideline and, and, and the coach has decided to have his own way, as it should be. It'd be funny if he replaces somebody else this time. <laughs> Farrow to play it now. Mortimer back to Farrow. Just out on the full. So on in 24 goes Steve Hansen. And he's probably going out there and he's gonna to say to Don McKinnon, the coach sent me back to say I've gotta take, I've gotta take your place. Don McKinnon slowly coming from the field. Lamb. Steve Mortimer. Johnston. Lamb. Oh. Scrum going down inside the North 22. Lamb. Farah. so often today have moved to to the conclusion they were looking for and then somebody uh, has made just elementary mistakes at the play the ball fed by McCaffrey won by the Bears Long pass and a good one, finding Brett French. Graham going for a run himself, about 10 metres down that blind side. McCaffrey. Jones. Five gone now for Norse. Cannon. And that's a good looking kick. He's found touchdown on the, the Canterbury 22 line. Cannon was on the, the blind side. He folded around to the open and was able to find Sandy Campbell standing shallower than what he might uh, normally have stood. Lamb. 
in and around and outside the 22 a, a big fend then by lamb inside for o'brien he's away from the uh, second row forward the fullback is chasing i don't like his chances o'brien is heading for the corner and it's canterbury banks down with steve o'brien scoring his second try terry lamb was the man who set it up little barba he's having a blinder of a game steve o'brien scores his second try well, what is there in the game of rugby league that this little fellow can't do? And there he is. He set it all up. He, f he fended off a, a forward as though he was getting rid of an opposition halfback. And then Steve O'Brien went for the longest point on the ground and picked up his second. Well, Terry Lamb has got it all. He was able to push off a tackle, found his way through a little hole. But let's give a lot of credit here to Steve O'Brien. I thought he, he timed and positioned his chop back inside to perfection. He took the ball on the fly. Conlon, the North Sydney fullback, had the angle on him. And for a while, for a while it looked as if he might have stopped him short of the line. But O'Brien's got plenty of pace, and he was able to go on with the job. Steve O'Brien scores for Canterbury Bankstown. Try number five. Attempted conversion by Lamb. It's hit the upright and bounced away. No change. Here's the NEC big game scoreline. Canterbury 26, North Sydney 6. There's been some strong performances in the Canterbury forward line today. Including this man with the ball now. Robinson, yes. No question about that. And a penalty goes to Canterbury. <laughs> when you see the halves playing well, probably the first thing you've got to say is, well, somebody in front of them is doing their job. And that's what's happened with Canterbury today. They've built their game around defence in the first half. The tries came as a result of North Sydney mistakes often. And uh, that's why you're seeing Terry Lamb having an absolute blinder here today. The big six in front of him are doing it all and just building the road for him. Folks plays it back to Johnston. Lamb switches from open to blind and gives it to Langmack. He gets his arms around the corner. Good work by Langmack. Then to Sexworth. And now Terry Lamb back into the centre. He picks up Steve Folks, who's grounded about four metres out from the line on the fourth tackle. Lamb is the dummy half. Out it goes to Mortimer. Mortimer puts a grubber kick in. And uh, Chris Mortimer goes in, but it's been taken in the in goal. Very well, in fact, by the North Sydney uh, winger, Les Kiss. The grubber kick from Mortimer in behind the defence, but it didn't get in behind the winger, Les Kiss. I think on the previous play, the ball that Terry Lamb was ge very generous. I thought he could have scored himself had he set sail for the try line, but uh, I'm sure he was looking to give someone else a try and it just didn't come off. Florimo's drop kick is taken back by Farrah towards the 22 line. He's met and put down by Hanson and Jones. Across to Steve Mortimer, now to Lamb, done out wide and gets it away for Sigsworth, inside, it came off a North player, and Terry Lamb, backing up, scores his second try of the day. <laughs> Sigsworth is injured for Canterbury. That was a great piece of football. With tremendous work here by Paul Dunn. Sigsworth just trailed him through, it came off the hands as he passed inside of Florimo and Lamb picks up the try right under the uprights. Well, Lamb threw a pass in this backline move and it was the second one after Mortimer. And of course, what he did after he threw the pass, and this was a beautiful ball by Dunn under Sigsworth, was Lamb then set off down the centre of the field. He realised that the ball was going to come back this way if the break was made. It came off a North Sydney hand, but the ever-present Lamb was there to finish it off. Here's a beautiful pass by Paul Dunn. Sigsworth was running exactly the distance behind him that he needed to be. Positioned himself well, and here's what Bill was talking about. Lamb said, well, what goes out wide has to come back into the middle eventually. I'll back up in here in case I'm required. That's exactly what happened. Here he is with a conversion attempt of his own try. Sigsworth being helped from the field. <laughs> There's 
there's the conversion, pardon me, successful for Terry Lamb. And there's the new scoreline, Canterbury 32, leading North 6. Under five minutes of the match remaining, and Michael Hagen has gone on to take the place of Phil Sigsworth. Well, Graham, you've been sitting down there, and I guess not because you're a former Bulldog, but you would be delighting in some of the things you're seeing here today from Canterbury Bankstown. A comment, though, on Terry Lamb's performance. Outstanding performance. Uh, Terry Lamb remains probably the greatest support player in rugby league anywhere in the world. Anybody that makes a break, Terry Lamb certainly knows how to sniff a try out. The forwards have certainly set this one up. Their defence in that first 40 minutes was outstanding. They are a great football team and they're a side... They did the similar thing last year. They struggled a little bit, then they put about a win of seven or eight in a row together. Uh, they're doing it again this year. They're coming right at the right end of the Premiership. And for all the French uh, sides, North Sydney, Balmain, South, they're all struggling and trying to... They're, they're going to fight for that th uh, fourth and fifth spot. Canterbury know how important it is to finish in the top three. And as I say, they know the right end of the business. They're coming good at the right time. This is going to be a penalty, I do believe. Uh, a couple of hookers on the ground, and it's a penalty going to Canterbury. Farrah finds the line just short of the halfway. Goes Kelly. Now to Mortimer. Away to Lamb. This is folks. Mortimer. Lamb. Hagen. Now it's Campbell. And tackled. Not into touch though. Just into North Sydney's area. Kelly. Lamb. Farrah. Kicked by Farrah. Sees Chris Mortimer go down the ground, but it's been taken by John MacArthur. Folks making the tackle. Cannon. Hagen back there. He's fallen over. He'll score. Yes, it's a try for Mark Cannon. Well, in a side that's been badly beaten today, Mark Cannon has continued to try his, uh, his stomach out. He's given his all. And uh, he's been rewarded, if you can call it a reward, by a try in the final stages of the match. Well, the fullback for Canterbury was Michael Hagen. He'd come on into a position he was unaccustomed. But it was a good kick by Cannon. He realised there was a little bit of space to put the ball into. He was fairly fortunate that, uh, that Hagen did slip. But he was on the spot to carry on with the job, and that he did. Paul Conlon from right in front. The score becomes 32 points to 12. He said he can put that on the Harbour Bridge. There's the score, 32 to 12. Canterbury leading North, NEC big game. I mentioned that lady watches us in Calgary, in Canada. It's pretty cold there, but I've got news for you. <laughs> it's pretty I'm getting cold up the top of this scaffolding tower at the moment too. Anderson has ac actually cramped. And there's the siren. It's all over from North Sydney Oval. The match won by Canterbury Bankstown by a resounding margin. 
Terry Lamb having an outstanding game. Here's the scoreboard for you. Robinson a, a try. The penalty try was awarded to Steve Folks. Lamb two, O'Brien two, Lamb four goals for Norse Florimo and Cannon tries and Kiss and Conlon kick goals. 32 points to 12 in favour of the defending Premier's Canterbury-Bankstown. Jeff, it's nice to be back in the top grade. Oh, mate, it was lovely. Uh, after being out of first grade for a while, you know, the